Hello, everybody. This is Stan, the Annuity Man. Welcome to one of the greatest webinar presentations ever, Annuities 101. Welcome to class. All you guys that skipped class in uh, college, you finally attended one, so this is good. Just think how many classes you would have attended if you didn't actually have to go to class. You just could do it on the webinar. Um, I am joined, as I always am, by the co-owner of Annuities.Direct, the only direct-to-consumer platform in the annuity world. His name is Jimmy Dot Direct. We have changed that because he has changed the industry. He is a disruptor. Jimmy, say hello to all of the people across the country. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Jimmy, give them the overview of what annuities dot direct is, and then we're just going to do a headfirst dive into annuities 101. Well, annuities dot direct was created obviously to allow you to control whether or not annuity fits into your investment uh, landscape or not. Uh, we provide you all the data. You can go through the website, obviously, and click on uh, any of the four major categories, whether it's FIA, DIA, QLAC, or MIGAs. Run your own quotes. You can actually, there's podcasts, webinars. Uh, you can ask questions, as many of you did prior to this. Uh, we went out on a limb and asked you to contribute questions to tonight's webinar, and we got uh, quite a few. I'll just say that uh, Stan has answered some of those already because I knew we wouldn't be able to get to all of them. And then we have some uh, questions in store for you tonight that we want to go through and just kind of delve into the basics. I think that's really the, the gist of it, isn't it, Stan? Absolutely. I mean, the annuities are not complicated. They're made complicated by agents that don't know any better or have agendas. So, you know, don't ever thank them. I mean, take a look at this. Um, pick the cow that you want to be, and that, and don't be that cow. Um, at the end of the day, don't overanalyze this. These are contractual guarantees. I was telling Jimmy Dot the, this morning. You know, I really don't even like the word annuity, even though the Romans came up with it. I'm a big fan of Romans, as everybody knows out there. But anyway, don't call them annuities. They're contractual guarantees. You should be buying them for contractual guarantees only. So that's what they are. Go back to the first slide, because even though I like the cow slide. You know, oh, that was the first slide. Um, yeah, go to the next one. I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was. annuities 101. What is an annuity? It is a contractual guarantee. It's a transfer risk product between you and the annuity company. Um, so you want to keep it simple. At the end of the day, you want to start at the finish line to find out if you need an annuity. In other words, what do you want the money to contractually do, and when do you want those contractual guarantees to start? Those are the two questions. Again, what do you want the money to contractually underword? Underline contractually, what do you want the money to contractually do? When do you want those contractual guarantees to start? Don't get complicated. That's it. From there, we can figure out if you need an annuity. So in essence, I mean, if you just pull up Webster's, it's, a, it's an agreement between you and the insurance company. Um, with an income annuity and a lifetime income stream, you're, you're transferring the risk for them to pay you for the rest of your life, regardless of how long you live. With a MIGA, you're, you're transferring the risk for them to protect your principal and pay you an interest. Um, interest on an annual basis. I mean, it's really that simple. Um, but all annuities aren't income annuities, even though the majority of the ones used out there do have those uh, functions. A SPIA and a DIA and a QLAC are income products. MIGA is not an income product. MIGA is a CD type product that kicks off a, an interest rate on an annual basis. So that's pretty much the annuity world. Um, you know, the, you can solve for income. You can solve for guaranteed interest. So income now is an immediate annuity. It's a SPIA. Income later is a deferred income annuity or income rider. That's it. Guaranteed interest is a MIGA. Guaranteed principal um, would be uh, an indexed annuity, which is a fixed annuity, or a fixed rate annuity, which is a MIGA. And you get tax deferred growth from this, which is, you know, I don't know, Jim, is that the eighth wonder of the world? I'm not sure. A tax deferred growth is, is why annuities were put on the planet in the first place. So in essence, you're looking at your portfolio and you're saying, how much risk do I want to transfer? And one of the big things you're going to have to get over is opportunity. Um, I was just on the phone with a gentleman today, and he wanted his cake and eat it too, which he wants growth and income. You're not going to get it. I know the index annuity guys just fell on the floor out there, but you're just not. It's a dream. If you want growth, go, go buy a non-annuity. If you want guarantees, buy an annuity. It's that simple, straight up. Jimmy, jump in anytime. I'm swinging the jump rope pretty quickly. <laughs> well, I think, I, you know, one of the things that I was thought, thought about as we were outlining this is that it really is as simple as a transfer of risk product in that you're looking for the guarantees. Unfortunately, I mean, I was on the phone with one of my clients today talking about uh, a MIGA versus a bond, and 
the transfer of risk, the difference between a bond and a guaranteed investment are night and day, but where we get hung up is on the interest rate. We, we constantly will look at, well, a bond will pay me 4% and Mike is only going to pay me 3%. You're talking about an apple and an orange, and you have to compare the two. And I know that people like to say that bonds don't have risk, but if we woke up in the morning and Janet Yellen and the 12 Fed dwarfs decided that they were going to hike interest rates 1% tomorrow on the overnight Fed funds rate, ask how much principal risk a bond would have in that environment. And that's the difference between a guaranteed asset and a market asset. So bonds are market assets. They're subjective to market risk. So, uh, you know, I don't think you can emphasize enough the fact that you're, it is a transfer of risk product and you're looking for the guarantees. You're not looking at what has the best performance. You're looking at what gives me the guarantee asset. And if you get stuck on performance, you're always going to migrate to the market because it's more attractive. And there's no way that anybody can, I mean, I had a, I've had some interesting calls today. Stan and I were talking about some of those before we got on the webinar. But I had one this morning where I have a gentleman who's been a client of mine for 30 years that is 86 years old and wants to basically buy a stock on Monday and sell it on Friday and see how well that does over the year as to whether or not he can make money for income. Uh, now, you know, he's talked to me for 30 years and he still doesn't quite get the difference between risk and what is a, a guarantee. So I think it's very important that people understand that. And by the way, if any indexed annuity gunslinger salesman says that indexed annuities are replaceable for bonds, they're not only a mental midget, they're an idiot. They're a flat-out idiot that's left their IQ at the door. That is such a square peg in a round hole. So anybody that's floating that, and I've seen some actual articles that's actually gotten published that talks about index annuities and bonds, give me a break. That is a joke. So don't even go there. Next slide, Jim, before I go crazy over here. <laughs> um, you know, we, all, we look at uh, annuities pretty, pretty basic. You either need income now, income later, or you need a guarantee, Right. Income now and income later. Income now is an immediate annuity. Income later, it could be a DIA or a QLAC. It also could be an income rider for income later. And when we say income later, deferring for you know anywhere from 1 to 20 years for the DIA, you can, you can um, defer up to 40, 45 years. And no two, depending what the income stream is going to be. MIGAs are CD products. You know, we're getting ready to come out one just by the way. Heard today, 3.15% on a five-year. If you're interested in that, you might want to email us because that's going to go quickly. and We're just taking allocations right now. So everybody said, well, Stan, 3.15% on a five-year is not that good. Check the 10-year treasury. Yeah, I mean, and if anybody's guaranteeing, saying, well, I can get you more, they're lying. I mean, they're just flat-out lying. You cannot polish this thing up. We are in new interest rate world. Um, who knows if it's going to go up or down? Who knows if they're going to raise rates in June? Um, the last time they raised rates in December, it was a non-event. Actually, it, actually, payouts went down. Uh, so don't uh, don't be dependent on Janet Yellen for anything, and I do mean anything. Next slide. Well, I, I just want to interject one thing here because <clears throat> in a lot of conversations that we have uh, over our, our careers, one of the things that is very interesting to me is to be able to break down the simplicity of this because a lot of the questions, which we'll get to in a second, that were emailed in. Uh, to me, when you look at a SPIA as an example, a single premium immediate annuity, I'm going to take a lump sum of money, let's just say $100,000, I'm going to give it to an insurance company, and they're going to give me back, let's just say $500 a month for the rest of my life. Then I can't outlive it. What people automatically migrate to is the, the ROI, the return on investment. Well, what's the return on investment of that? Well, you can't really calculate it, one, until you die, but two, it tells me that you're missing the point of why you would buy a SPIA to begin with. Again, it goes back to what we were just talking about. It's a shift of the guarantees, the contractual guarantees, and versus a market return. If you want a market return, you've got to buy the market. Don't try to compare the two because they don't compare, and it's very difficult to compare any fixed annuity-type product to a market return. There, you're talking about two different a animals with two totally different issues. And unfortunately, in, in the United States, from my experience, is that we have taught everybody to look at performance. We've taught everybody to look at percent of return. 
And the reality is, is that we should be looking at what lifestyle we gain from money and not so much what the performance of the money is. Will Rogers, still my favorite quote of all time, is that he said a thousand times if he said it once, I'm more, returned, I'm more interested in the return of my principal than the return on my principal. And so there's a difference of how you invest money and what you put money into relative to what the end objective is. And I think when you talk about annuities 101, that's really what we're talking about is determining first and foremost, what do you want and how do you get what you want? And sometimes we have to admit that we just can't get there from here. And I think that's what Stan was yeah. alluding to, that sometimes you just can't find that. If you say, hey, Stan, I want market growth, hey, have a nice day. It's been good knowing you. Come back when you want guarantees. Now, if you ask a, a, a bunch of agents, hey, I want market growth, they'll say, oh, I've got it. They don't have it. They have an index and a variable annuity that you're going to hate, period. So if you're looking for market growth. So, I mean, it's really that simple. Jim, you want to pepper in a question as we go to the next slide? Because what they're piling up, as I see. <laughs> Uh, you know, one is uh, address the issues of annual percentage increases of the income value uh, if you're holding it for 10 years till I annuitize. Okay. So in essence, what, what you're talking about, I'm going to give the company $100,000. I'm not going to turn on the income stream until 10 years. Well, what two products or, or three products would that be? Culex, Diaz, and Riders, right? So what the, in, the, the insurance company is going to do is they're going to cook the money. They're going to they're going to enhance the payout the longer they get to hold on to it. So the longer you defer and let them hold on to it, the higher the payment's going to be. But it's still going to be based uh, primarily on your life expectancy. Now in the industry, they call it implied longevity yield. In the real world, we call it cooking. So how long the money's going to cook? So you can't time. I, you know, I'm going to we're going to do a webinar called uh, How to Time Annuities, and it's going to be one slide, and it's going to say you can't. Um, because people that are trying to time this are kidding themselves. And if you do not think that the annuity people are sitting around the marble desk asking that the same questions that you think you're trying to beat them at, they are. And they're pricing the product so that there's not a perfect time or perfect scenario or some pricing anomaly that you can find, which you're never going to be able to, to get it. Per you're not going to be able to buy high and sell low or buy, buy low and sell high, whatever your strategy is. It doesn't work with an annuity. I had a person today talk about a trend and a moving average of interest rates with annuities. I stopped him. I said, what are you talking about? You're in some stock neverland. This is a contractual guarantee. This is annuity. These are cinder blocks, okay? You're buying the guarantee. So don't get it confused and don't start making market correlations because you won't look smart. Well, and I think to add to that, one of the things that's very interesting to me in having dealt with insurance companies for many, many years on the life insurance side as well as on the annuity side, one of the things that is interesting when you talk to the actuaries that build these products because they use mathematicians who sit around with quant strategies and they actually look at hypothetically what interest rate can we pay that we don't jeopardize the risk of being in business 30 years from now. They are, you have to think about in Japan, Japan's uh, growth or outlook for their economy is a 60 to 100 year term. In the United States, we look at the economy month to month and quarter to quarter. And so unfortunately, when you look at interest rates, you can't look, if the Fed raises rates on the June 14th meeting, if the Fed all meets on June 14th and they say, hey, we're going to raise rates 50 basis points. If you think that that's going to impact what happens to yield rates, on annuity contracts that are projected out over 30 to 60 years, you're only kidding yourself. They're looking over the long life cycles of these products, not the short cycles. They're not timing uh, how much they're going to make in 90 days. These, these companies are looking at how much money are they going to make over the 30 to 50 years. That's the key that you have to focus on with a guarantee is that you're looking at a long-term cycle because the insurance companies aren't going to be on the hook for – a one-year cycle on a SPIA, they're on the hook for how long you live. So if you're 60 and they're projecting your life cycle to be 86 years, they're on the hook for 26 years potentially. They have to plan the product that way. They can't plan it for one quarter to one quarter as to what the Fed will do. They're going to plan it based on what they think interest rates will do over the next 30 years. And I can tell you right now the 30-year bond is yielding right at 3%, and guess what MIGAs are yielding? 3%. There's no magic to this. I mean, you just have to look at the fact that the facts are the facts, 
and if we all want to time these things, it's not really going to work very well. Sorry to get on that soapbox. But let's well, and also, too, if you're going to wait and try to see, well, rates going to go up. And if you think, if you are, are delusional enough to think that annuity companies are going to react automatically to any rate hike and adjust it, you're kidding yourself. They're not. It's the, they're going to go so slow. And in, just like in December when it was raised a quarter of a 25 basis points, they didn't even move at all. They just looked at that and yawned and went on with their business. Because so, you've got to remember it, that when they hiked the rates 25 basis point at, in November, when they hiked the Fed rate 25 basis points, the 10-year Treasury was yielding 2.37%. The 10-year Treasury, as of the close today, was at 187%. That means we've lost 50 basis points on the 10-year with a Fed rate hike. And products like annuities are based off the 10 and 20 and 30-year Treasury bonds. So be careful what you are asking for because it doesn't know so much matter what the Fed does. Look at the long-term yield curve. That will dictate what products do, what CDs do, and everything else. So you've got to uh, put it all in perspective. Right. And if people say, well, Stan, you know, the rates are low. U.S. 10-year Treasury, 1.8. Germany 10-year Treasury, 0.18. Italy, 1.4. Spain, 1.5. UK 1.4, Japan minus 0.1. So we still have the highest 10-year treasury. So good luck trying to – just don't time it. And don't call us and say we're, we're going to time it because I'm not going to allow it. That's, that's crazy. You're smarter than that. So, you know, we, we call it chasing uh, rainbows with uni uh, riding on a unicorn. You know, people – someone emailed us. Uh, one of the questions was, I want 100% liquidity and 6%. Now, I hope everyone out there is laughing because we laughed. Um, that's crazy. Uh, with I the 10-year treasury where it's at, that's crazy. Nobody can do that. Nobody can do that. And by the way, people. another person asked a question I just saw come through about, well, um, the, the cash flow interest rate is 6.1%. No, that's 6.1% that's on a SPIA this guy is referring to is a reflection of your actuarial percentage, your life expectancy. So when you get that thing, New York Life sends these out all the time. It makes me sick. They'll have like this window envelope, and it'll say 6.5%. That's not yield. That is a reflection of a 65 or 67-year-old's life expectancy. That's all, period. That's what that means. That's, that's a reflection of how long the insurance company thinks you're going to live. But, you know, you're not going to get 6% return on investment, 100% liquidity. And please spare us any emails with some market dart throw that you did that created that. No one does that consistently in these markets, period. Uh, and uh, one of the questions is 3.5% for a CD. Uh, if you can find a bank that is uh, paying 3.5% on a CD, uh, I would actually pull up their credit rating and look at their financial balance sheet because right. most five-year CDs today are paying somewhere around 2 2.25%. Two uh, Go to bankrate.com, bankrate.com. They have the, the top CDs with real companies. There's a lot of bait-and-switch CD-type products. If you if you've bought something or look at it, uh, there's a lot of things on the Internet and in newspapers that show these high-rate CDs. There, there's no such thing. Those are actually, you love it, indexed annuities that they're factoring in the bogus bonus as part of the yield, which it's not yield. So there's a lot of bait-and-switch out there. There is no too good to be true product. You are not going to outsmart your neighbor. It is what it is. Just just with annuities, if we can get your your level of expectation in line with reality, you're going to like the product. If you're always thinking you're going to beat the market or, or be smarter than the next guy, you need to move on and go buy the options and futures and whatever you do. These are transfer of risk products. Well, and I think that, you know, one of the reasons that the first, you know, Thing that I put up here was you know asking better questions equals getting better answers is a lot of the as the questions were emailed in and and, uh, and I went through a lot of those one of the things that really kind of stuck out at me was the way the questions are asked in other words you know when people say can I get six percent ROI with hundred percent liquidity the better question is how much liquidity should I have before I buy an illiquid asset? In other words, do I need a certain amount of liquidity in my portfolio before I buy an annuity and I don't have to worry about liquidity? To me, that's a better question. You want to ask the right question so you can get the answers that will help you plan. If you ask questions that are uh, kind of ethereal in nature, what you're going to end up with is – somebody finding a product that will fit your question, and that's not really what you're after. I think people are 
learning the kind of learning about it. annuities that gives yeah. you, uh, you know, how to get there, how to get to the point where you're trying to be. And, uh, you know, so let's, I want to stay, I want to look at some of these questions because I think there were actually some good questions as we go along. But, uh, you know, uh, it's interesting because, you know, when you look at the point that we had up here was like a SPIA, it's for income. DIA, it's for deferred income. A QLAC is deferred income. A MIGA is for a guaranteed yield for a specific period of time. Each product in its simplicity has very few moving parts. It's when you start adding the moving parts, the riders, if you will, that everything gets a little bit confusing. So can address some of that. Well, you know, one of the big things out here right now are the upfront bonuses and the, and the income riders, et cetera. First of all, you know, people uh, <laughs> talking about asking the right questions. Someone talks about, emailed us, well, should I take the 8% bonus or 10% bonus or 9% bonus? The real question is, hey, Stan, is there a philanthropist at an annuity company that's giving free money away? The answer is no. There's 100 pennies in the dollar, and if, if someone's offering an upfront bonus, can you use it to your advantage if you're looking at just pure contractual guarantees? Yes. But is it free money? The answer is no. When we look at upfront bonuses attached to deferred annuities that might have a rider, it's one of six uh, contractual guarantee components that we use to calculate the contractual guarantees or to look at it. It, it carries no weight. There, there are no free money giveaways out there. that you. That, and there's the other thing, too, is, People say, well, Stan, I bought a 7% income rider. Income rider for everybody is a separate um, account, a separate calculation within a deferred annuity, typically an indexed annuity or variable, that you can only use for income. You can't peel off the interest. You can't get to the lump sum. You can't transfer it. You can only use it for income. And if you don't use it for income, it's not worth anything. But you can calculate it for income. That's what we use for income later calculation, that, QLAX, and DIAs. But there, there are no... 7% or 8% yields out there. So in the Bad Chicken Dinner Seminar with the guy with the bad pair of doctors standing up there, agent of choice, saying, I can get you a 10% bonus and 8% yield, they're lying. Or the guy on the TV that says, I can get you a 30% increase on your income stream. Not true. It's just not true. And there are no, um, it, you know, everybody has the access to the same products. I mean, we represent everybody out here. Uh, we have no skin in the game. People always say, Stan, what's your favorite annuity? I don't know. I have favorite contractual guarantees which would be on your situation. We don't know that till we run the quote. But there's nobody out there that's figured out how to do, how to, how to squeeze that lemon or get oil out of the brick. So when you see these ads that say, I can get you an extra percentage, understand this. And that what they're talking about are cost of living increases or with an index annuity index increases. What companies do when they offer those, those, those um, add-ons, is what Jim was referring to, they lower the payment. They lower the payment. In a, in a very simplistic world, if you bought the same product with and without an increase, without an increase starts at $1,000 conceptually, with an increase starts at $700. They're going to ratchet it down. And typically, there's a six to nine year break even point on any type of COLA, CPI, IU increase, et cetera. You already own the best uh, COLA in the country, and it's called Social Security. So understand that riders aren't free money. They do work if you fully understand them for their limitations and what they what they offer. Okay, increases and all that stuff. If, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. And interest rate timing, uh, you guys know better than that. It's it just doesn't work. It hasn't worked. Um, and you know you're not going to be able to to buy to sell it at the top or buy it at the bottom in the stock analogy in the annuity world. Period. Uh, and you know it's. I'm enjoying some of the questions that are coming in because uh, it's yeah, just, ask them. well, we just, I want to go back to one of the reasons that I decided to do Annuities 101 tonight when Stan and I were talking about what's the topic, I said I want to do Annuities 101 because I really want people to kind of back into the basics of what annuities are. And you're, you answered the Dia QLAC question of, you know, what's the performance during the 10 years and the uh, gentleman doesn't believe that that was the total answer to the question. And it know, is. It is because it is. there's no way to calculate the performance. In other words, if you say, I put in $100,000 into a deferred income annuity, 
and in 10 years they're going to give you a thousand dollars of income per month and you tell me when you're going to die we'll figure out what the calculation is so it's all still actuarially based it's based on actuarially how long does the money sit in the account and actuarially how long will you live and when do you actually die so it's a computation of all the variables it's not any one thing it's not like buying a 10-year cd at, at, that cooks at five percent and then when you turn on the five percent it pays you x dollars that's a whole different banana than when you're talking about what a deferred income annuity or a QLAC will do. Well, I understand this, everybody. Everybody needs to understand this. With any, any income annuity, whether it's a SPIA, a DIA, a QLAC, an income rider that's attached to either a variable or an index annuity, any of those income-producing products, any, A-N-Y, any, it's a return of your principal and interest. Anybody out there, any agent out there that says they can offset it, they're lying. If they say they can offset it and you, they're going to give you this lifetime income stream and you're still going to have that amount, that you're, they're lying. They're straight up lying. They cannot guarantee that. So there could be, with every one of these situations for a lifetime income, that you get to the point where the account's at zero. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients where their account's at zero. They've outlived their life expectancy, but guess what? The payments are still coming. That's the transfer of risk. People say, well, you know, is it a good investment? And first of all, it's not an investment. Second of all, how about if your account's been at zero for 10 or 11 years, yet you're still getting $800 a month for the rest of your life? Pretty good transfer of risk, right? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. So there's a lot of too good to be true stuff out there. I'm hoping that since you're on this webinar, you're not going to fall for that. And if you've fallen for that, never talk to that person again. Don't, don't, and don't look for the replacement too good to be true product because it's not there. So they do fit, but we need you to have a realistic um, expectations out there of how they work. And how they work is with for income, it's primarily based on life expectancy. So don't get caught up on interest rates. Interest rates do play a role, albeit secondary. So understand that. And people say, well, Stan, well, how about a how about a period certain? How about a period certain of five or ten years? Well, those are real math products. You can look at the you can look at the return over that time period for ten years and figure out exactly what it is. But you know, Jim and I will look at it and say, really, there's not a lot of value, um, you know, at the even at the ten year level, on a, on a ten year period. So the value is transferring the risk so that they're going to pay you for the rest of your life. Well, and think about it this way. I mean, if you if you go to work, and this is now I know we're being old school, but I'm old. So uh, if we're old school, and we go back, we say, all right, I start to work for IBM on my twentieth birthday. And on my 50th birthday, I've worked for IBM for 30 years. And they say, Jim, because you've worked here for 30 years, we're going to give you a pension that's equivalent to 55% of the high, highest five years that you, of your earning years. What's the, what's the ROI on that? You have no way of knowing. They're just saying, here's what your pension's going to be. And so when you buy an annuity, you're essentially, it's the same way as Social Security. How much did you pay into Social Security, and what was the ROI on that when you retired and got your Social Security benefits at age 62, 65, or 70? Well, what's the ROI? It's calculated the same way in an annuity. It's what you put in versus what you get out is a factor of how long you live. It's basically, it's, a, it's an actuarially based product relative to we're on the hook to pay you as long as you're alive. When you die, we'll run the calculation and we'll tell your kids how much you made on a SPIA contract because that's really how it does work. Uh, and again, I think that what happens is take off your performance hat, take off your market hat, and put on your annuity hat that's saying I'm getting contractual guaranteed for a specific income stream for the rest of my life. That's called lifestyle. When you're investing in the market, it's called life risk. In other words, I'm, I'm willing to risk my lifestyle for the money that I've got exposed to equities, bonds, or other assets. And I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form, because I invest in all of those myself, and I understand there is risk. But people don't have to go far back to remember 1987. They don't have to, they, I mean, if you're in the bond market, go back and look at each product in the, in the 90s where the bond markets, the high-yield bond markets collapsed. Look at what happened to stocks in 2001, 2003, 2008. 
and factor all of that in. For the tra trailing 12 years, the S&P 500 index has returned zero for 12 years. Zero percent per annum. That's what it's returned. That's the risk of the markets. That's all we're saying. I'm not saying it won't do that or it will do this or anything. It's just don't try to compare an apple to an orange because they don't go in the same bowl. All right, let's go forward. Uh, let's get to right. some of these questions because I think some of these are actually really good questions. Okay. All right. Uh, by asking better questions, uh, the question was asked was, do I buy an annuity now or wait for rates to rise? <laughs> uh, to me, the better question would be, I want a QLAC for the deferred income. How much will interest rates impact the payment if rates rise 1, 2, or 3 percent? Because in effect, that's what you're trying to ask me is, what effect do interest rates have on the annuity payment if I wait or if I buy it now? I mean, that's the ultimate question. And I think that in some ways we've probably answered that, but I know Stan has a better answer. Well, also, too, also look at this. If the longer you wait and you're trying to time it, then you're missing payments. Let's just say you're thinking about buying an immediate annuity, and you're going to say, Stan, I'm going to hold for the next three months until rates rise. Well, if you, if you did that, and there's no perfect answer. Trust me, there's just sales answers, and all sales answers are bad answers, right? So if you bought the immediate annuity when you thought about it, you're going to get three payments. If you wait and you bought it three months from now, how long is it going to take with any type of interest rate rise to make up for those payments? And believe me, the, insur the insurance companies are thinking about that, all right? They're making that decision tough for you. You're not going to be able to time it perfectly. Now, a lot of the questions I get, too, is, hey, Stan, if interest rates rise and I already own a DIA or MIGA or SPEA or what, will it adjust? No, it will not adjust. Now, this is where the index annuity gunslingers step in and say, mine will adjust. I've got one that will adjust. Well, it might adjust, but they've ratcheted down that payment so low initially that it's going to take forever to make it up. So there is no perfect product out there. There is no product that, that tracks interest rate and tracks inflation. They're going to price it at the time you buy it, and you're going to own that interest rate level, but you're also going to own your life expectancy, period. And that could be a good thing, too. Second one, should I buy an income rider? Income riders and deferred income annuities you can solve for income later. They get you to the same place, just taking a different road to get there. Now, outside of a, a, of a IRA and a non-qualified account, deferred income annuities have what's called an exclusion ratio, which gives you a tax preferred income stream, whereas with an income rider, um, majority of them are LIFO, last in, first out, on the taxation standpoint of them. Now, people are going to say, but Stan, there's this uh, variable annuity that has income rider that's annuitized. Yeah, but it's annuitized at such a low level that it's comical. It's called a GMIB. And by the way, I've written a book on income riders. You should read it. Just email us for the books. We'll send them to you, no charge, or you could go on Amazon and buy them. But uh, I've written a book on income writers, and there's no good answer. I've also written a book on SPSD, as Micah's QLAX, and longevity annuities as well. So any of these products, there's a book that we can send you, hard copy, that you can read 50, 60 pages and get it 100% and then run the quotes on your own. So what's some other questions, Jim? But those are the ones that I know came in over the over the. And I uh, want to go back to a question that I think is important to answer here. Um, <clears throat> The question is, you know, basically, Stan, we're being told that we've answered nothing but about how to determine uh, what to decide an annuity to buy and what situation they fit. And no, stop, stop right there. Let's do it one more time. Here we go. There's two questions asked. Write it down. What do I want the money to contractually do? When do I want those contractual guarantees to start? That's it. That is it. Period. Let's do it again. What do I want the money to contractually do? When do I want those contractual guarantees to start? Now, someone could say, Stan, I need income right now, and I need $2,222 a month. Great, we'll start for it. Stan, I don't need income now. I need income later. I need to start in five years. I need to be joint with my wife. I need it to be $1,200 a month. Great, we'll go solve for it. Stan, I don't need income at all. I just need to protect my principal. Great, let's do five-year and end MIGAs. It's that simple, people. How, how much more simple can I get? There is no allocation. There is no... Hey, Stan, should it be 60, 60, 30, 10? Should it be 58, 41? No. It, it depends on your risk tolerance. It depends on what you're trying to achieve, period. That's it. There is no napkin pie chart. 
growth on where you, how many annuities you need or what percentage everyone needs. Not everybody needs an annuity, but a lot of people need what I call income floor additions, part of the income floor, pension, Social Security, and then there's another gap there. That's where an annuity needs to be fit in, whether the gap is income now, that's a SPIA, or income later, that's a DIA or a writer or a QLAC. But it's really that simple. Ask what you want the money to contractually do, and when do you want those contractual guarantees to start? Now, if one of those answers, ask what you want, want the money to contractually guarantee to do, and you say market growth, well, you didn't read the question, right? Because that's not contractual. And I, and I think that it's really important that, uh, that we grasp the simplicity of that, in that don't ask an annuity to do something it was never designed to do. In other words, if you want growth greater than the yield on a 10-year treasury, then you should be looking at other investments other than an annuity. If so, in other words, if you're looking to have your cake and eat it too, in other words, you want a 6% yield and liquidity and guarantees, nobody has made that product. And if somebody told you they have, they're just pretty much bald-faced lying, is my opinion. Uh, and I've been around the securities industry for 32 years, so I think I get what products are available out there, and I know how each product works. But what I'm also saying to you is listen to the simplicity of what Stan just said. You know, what do you want the contractual guarantees to do, and when do you want it to start? And that's why I put this slide up here was because it really is a SPIA. I want the contractual guarantees to give me a guaranteed income for the rest of my life, and I want the income to start now. That's a SPIA. You know, and by the way, it. stop right there. If anybody says for income now, indexed annuity, if anybody says that, and a lot of those gunslingers out there say they are full of it. That's, that's financial malpractice. An indexed annuity will never contractually beat an, an, a single premium immediate annuity for lifetime income, period. So if someone's trying to fit that square peg in a round hole and not showing you that immediate annuity for income now needs, that's a straight commission play. Nothing more, nothing less, and it's fraudulent, period, exclamation point. So I, that's happening a lot out there. So I think if you just practice the simplicity of it, what do you want, when do you want it to happen, and then match this. The reason people struggle, this is my opinion, and I, I've sat in conference rooms with all the regulators, I've sat in conference room with people who design products, whether they're mutual funds, ETFs, annuities, I've, through my career I've had the privilege of sitting down and talking to all these different design of products, and one of the things that I never hear is when a product is designed is people sit down and say, we are designing this product to achieve X. When they design products, they try to design them all over the board. Uh, we'll buy, you know, we're going to have a, a, a balanced growth fund. Well, what does that mean? I mean, what does balanced mean? Balanced between what? Is it a teeter-totter and you're trying to balance what you're investing in? It doesn't make sense. Any asset you buy other than a guaranteed asset is accompanied by market risk. And the minute you introduce market risk, the question is how much and when. How much risk does it have, and when will it happen? Because it will happen at some point. It's just a matter of when statistically. You get average rates of returns on stocks and bonds and REITs and MLPs. You get those average rates of returns from nothing other than at some point something went wrong that caused those assets to go down and create an average rate of return. And that's important to understand. Uh, so you understand I think it was like the conversation that we had uh, on the podcast last week where the person we were interviewing made the comment about an indexed annuity illustration. She said it will never come true. It can't come true. And I thought that was a very profound point because it's just a she glitch. She said ever. Point in she time. said never, ever, ever, ever will it come true. So if, if that's the case, then why are we looking at proposals, hypotheticals, theoreticals, back-tested, projected, agent, hopeful return scenarios? You should never look at them. You should look at that person and say, you're kidding me. You're a joke. Show me worst-case scenario. Show me if everything goes to hell in a handbasket what this thing's going to do because that's where you buy it. Now, the simplistic products like SPIAs, DIAs, and QLACs and MIGAs, I mean, seriously, they don't have any moving, moving. There is no moving parts. There, there's no market attachments. It is what it is. It's very simplistic. I mean, if Warren Buffett ever bought an annuity, he would buy these because you could explain it to a nine-year-old. Indexed annuities, 
I mean, we've done podcasts on that. I would encourage people to go listen to some of our podcasts with some of the leading people in the industry. I mean, there's 792 index option choices. There's four, over 45 different indices. Good luck. Good luck with that dark throw. And at the end of the day, you're going to get, you know, around 3% if all the planets align themselves. You'd be better off buying a, buying a MIGA short-term five-year and calling it a day, in my opinion. The only thing is you're going to be able to attach, if you need an income rider, that's a whole other story. But even in those situations, we just completely ignore the index annuity component and, and look at it as a delivery system for the guarantees of the income rider. So people always say, Stan, you hate indexed annuities. Do you even sell them? I hold my nose and grab the barf bag and use them with the attached income riders for income later if it beats a deferred income annuity because we always go with the highest contractual guaranteed number, period. All right. Um, let's go back to a couple of our questions here, Stan, just so that we can be thorough. Uh, what was the one on, was the one on long-term care before that? Interesting. Can no, I use a annuity for yeah. long-term care? Hey, listen, everybody, the best long-term care product is traditional long-term care. Anybody that's pitching long-term care with an annuity as primary coverage is kidding yourself. Now, if you're the person out there that drinks a bottle of scotch a day and smokes six packs of Marlboros, then maybe an annuity is the only way that you get to do it, right? Um, and there are a guaranteed issue annuities out there that have what income riders that suppose, you know, they say, well, it's a doubler. All that means you're going to get your money back quicker when you can't do two of the six daily functions, which is feed yourself, clothe yourself, bathe yourself. It's not that great of a deal. Okay, you're all, it, when you can't do two of, the, two of the six daily functions, you're going to live an average of three years and a maximum of seven, and it ain't going to be pretty during that time period. So some of these riders will give your money back quicker, meaning that if you're getting ten thousand dollars in income and you and you can't clothe yourself or go to the bathroom, they're going to up it to twenty thousand dollars. Big deal. Um, it is what it is. If that's all you can get, great, but it's not a replacement for traditional uh, long-term care. The second one, can I buy a QLAC without being locked in today's interest rate? No. No. Yeah, you can't. If you buy it, you lock it, period. But remember, the money's cooking as it's uh, with the insurance company. So it's being, you know, the, your supposed low interest rate, and who knows if it is low, is being offset by the by the cooking of the money as it's sitting with the insurance company. So, yeah, there's there's no there's no magic to that one. Um, <clears throat> I, I want to make one comment, then I got a couple of questions that have come in. I want you to answer, Stan. But okay. uh, you know, one of the things that I find very interesting about this, and I want I want you to think about this just for my sake, and this comes from counseling and consulting with thousands of people over my career. And this is a question I ask people every day. What lifestyle do you want? Choose that first, then find the assets to match it. If you don't start with that question first, you're going to grab at every asset, and you're always going to look for unicorns and rainbows to give you the perfect investment. When people say to me, I want the maximum return on my money, I don't have a clue what that means. You know, the maximum return on your money could be 1%. It could be 12%. It could be whatever you choose based on what you're choosing to do. But you have to decide what lifestyle do you want, find the assets to provide it. Find the assets to provide the lifestyle you want and quit worrying about all these things so you can go out and just live life instead of worrying about whether or not interest rates are going up 25 basis points at the Fed meeting in June. I'd rather not even watch it. I'd rather send Janet Yellen a thank you card from Europe while I'm on a cruise than worry about whether yields are going to go up. So that's just my pet peeve. But focus a little bit more on what lifestyle you want and not so much chasing things uh, to maximize things. Chase things to provide lifestyle. Don't chase things to because you want to be better. Uh, but there's two great questions here I wanted to throw out, Stan, for you to answer. One is, uh, do you have to pay income taxes on the annuity payments received? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it depends right. on which, 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 which ones you get. A SPIA or a DIA outside of an IRA is going to have a portion that will be taxable. But, yeah, if, if it's inside of an IRA, all the money coming out is going to be taxable. If it's outside of an IRA, depending on what product, either a portion or all is going to be taxed. So that's another question I got today earlier is, I'm looking for a tax uh, annuity that pays tax-free income. Great, super. You know, I'm looking for six-pack apps. 
I'm looking for a, you know, give me a break. Um, and, and one of the big scams going on right now is, is, is buying life insurance, and they're, they're framing the loans off that life insurance policy as tax-free income. Hopefully, you're smarter than that. To, you know, it just, that doesn't exist. Um, the IRS is the IRS for a reason. We might hate them, but they're not going to allow any of that crap to happen. So don't think you're going to beat them. Period. Uh, the um, uh, let's see. We've got about five more minutes before we start rolling this thing, rolling this carpet up. So let's get a couple questions. One of the things is, should I use it in an IRA or non IRA? Guarantees are guarantees. Um, using the money within an IRA or outside of an IRA, it really then just comes down to the taxation of the income stream coming out, period. But the guarantees don't change inside or outside of an IRA, period. Um, you know, one of them, one of the questions, Jim, was should I spend my money now or buy a SPIA when I'm older? I always tell people, if you're comfortable with the markets, go for it. And at the time you want to transfer risk for income, then go buy a SPIA. Um, you can do that in ladders. You can ladder the, the purchase over time. A lot of people, a lot of our clients do that. But um, it really comes down, once again, to, to risk tolerance and, how, and if you want to transfer risk. So um, one of the other questions, Jimmy, I see down here well, is... But is, listen is, to the answer to the, what Stan just said and the importance of that answer. And that, you know, if you, if you don't, if you want to defer it and you want to invest because you think that's better, go for it. That's the reason yep. that we really started annuities.direct. This isn't an annuity pitch to buy an annuity. This no. is to inform you as a consumer what annuities actually do. I'm not here to tell you not to buy stocks. I'm not here to tell you to buy an annuity. I'm here to say figure out what the hell you want and then go get it. That's the problem is that we don't really sit down and focus on what do we want. We focus on, you know, I, I really wish I could figure it out. I've spent 30 years and I, I'm still working at it. But I, there's a question here, Sam, I want you to answer about variable annuities. Uh, mm -hmm. It says the only thing confusing about a deferred variable annuity is the death benefit. Can you talk about the death benefit with no rider for it, and is there any value to it? Well, the death benefit is the valuation of your separate accounts. To me and you, separate accounts means mutual funds. So if you don't have any attached riders, death benefit riders, to that policy, then your death benefit is the uh, mutual funds. And you might have, a, a depending on the carrier and the, pro and the product, a step up, meaning that it locks in for a death benefit. But understand that there's no uniformity with, with these products. They're all different. They all try to take a commoditized product and, and make it a little bit different so that they're unique. But if you don't have an attached death benefit rider to the, to the policy, then it's going to come down to the valuation of your mutual funds. Now, for people that can't get life insurance, and life insurance, you know, we don't sell life insurance, but life insurance is the best return on investment you'll never see. Okay, you'll be dead. I mean, it's great. But if you can't qualify for that from the underwriting standpoint, there are death benefit riders that you can attach to, annu to annuities, you know, so you don't have to go through any type of medical testing. That's going to guarantee a percentage growth that can only be used for a death benefit. But if that's it, if you're smoking the Marlboros with no filters, that might be your only choice, right? So there are legacy strategies, contractual legacy strategies that you can use. And I know one of the questions that came in that, you know, is a bond portfolio better for legacy than an annuity? You know, that's, again, apples and oranges. You know, bonds work. We like bonds. Been doing bonds forever. I mean, Jim was with every firm. I was with every firm out there that you that you can name. We get it. We understand it. But if you said, Stan, I want to guarantee and, and protect the principal and have a guaranteed interest rate for death benefit, then you buy a death benefit right with an annuity. Arguably, that might be better. I don't know. Um, but they both work. Um, but, yeah, you can't compare them. Don't compare investments to annuities. It's, it's a tragic mistake. Period. Um, yeah, that that was the question I was looking at. So, you know, we like bonds. I mean, we if anybody knows them better than us, I want to meet them. Um, I mean, Bill Gross, Jimmy, and I can have a pretty good conversation. Here's a question that came in. Uh, another one that I think is uh, interesting. I'm already retired, uh, <clears throat> already over seventy, and not needing any extra income for the next few to ten years. Uh, is there a benefit to buying an annuity? So the, the question is, should I buy it now and defer for 10 years? I mean, would that be a benefit, or should I just not do anything, not buy an Well, here's, here's, the, here's the upside and the downside to that choice, and there's no perfect answer. The, 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 the downside to that choice is you lock it in here, 
and, but you also know exactly what the to the penny what the income stream is going to be 10 years from now. Or you could risk it. You could manage the money up until the point you need income and buy an immediate annuity at that point in time. Both work. One of them is you know exactly to the penny what the income stream is going to be 10 years from now. The other one you don't. But the other one, if you manage the money well and get to the finish line and then buy an immediate annuity, it might work out more in your favor. But here's what I here's what I would propose to you. Why not do a if you're okay with the markets, then why not do a combination of that? So if you had a half million dollars in your brain, say I don't want to lock up a half million dollars, well then do two fifty, defer it for ten, know exactly what that is, manage the other two fifty with the plan of buying an immediate annuity at the time you need income. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Jim and I are big on incrementalism, laddering, layering, whatever you want to call it. You don't have to go all in. One of the biggest things we see out here that's a mistake, too much money is being placed into these annuities. It's not an all or nothing game. Why not tiptoe? Why not ladder? Why not layer? Why not incrementalize it? Why not manage a portion of it? And why not lock up a portion of it? Well, and I we're the mean, only annuity, we're the only annuity of cats in the country that's going to say that. Okay. Period. Because you know, the biggest thing is that what when you're looking at a portfolio is that, I mean you know, as I get older, I'm in the baby boomer generation, and as we progress through life, one of the things that you really start to appreciate is being able to buy a product like a SPIA, a single premium immediate annuity, and if I say, well, I want to, you know, put in $100,000 and I want to get back $500,000 a month of income from the SPIA, what would I do with the $500,000? I, well, I could lease a car. I could save it and go on a cruise. I could, you know, there's all. In other words, what lifestyle are you looking for? If you don't need the income, annuities do give you uh, the freedom and flexibility. Uh, I can use the money to give to charities every month. I can do a charitable gift annuity. There's all kinds of things that I can do with money from a guaranteed viewpoint that I can't do with market risk. But if you're comfortable with the markets, and I have, I'm That's telling you, the 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 more I understand the finite cycle of my income life as far as longevity, the more I understand that I do want some guarantees, the more I do understand that I want certain things in my own portfolio, because I talk to people all the time that say, well, I'm willing to take on portfolio risk. Well, I get that, but you also have to understand what you're saying, that I'm willing that if the market drops 15% this year, I'm willing to take that on. So again, use the simplicity of annuities for what they are and plan accordingly. I'm big on the fact that you, you want to buy something relative to what you're trying to do, not what you, you know, are dreaming up in your mind will possibly happen in some days down the road. But it's all right. uh, very interesting. Well, let's wind, let's wind this thing up. Let's, here's the summary in a nutshell. And let's all, let's all think of the two questions. What do I want the money to contractually do? And when do I want those contractual guarantees to happen? It's really that simple. And you can say, well, Stan, solve for you know, $2,122 a month for me and my wife, for me and my spouse. Or you could say, uh, find out what, Stan, find out what $200,000 will do. Now, that's the way to do it. If you remember those two questions, annuities are going to be very simple to you. You're going to like them. They're going to work. Um, now, with annuities.direct, you can do it yourself. Also, feel comfortable with, with working with me. If you need me to, to work with you all the way, I will. Okay, you don't have to use me, but I'm there if you need me. You can get live quotes on annuities.direct. You can order books from us. We'll just ship them. We won't bug you. We'll send you the books. You can read them. We're going to treat you like a professional. We're not going to bug you and beat you up, and there's not some Yahoo from left field going to show up at your doorstep and try to sell you something. This is this is the future of how annuities were going to be purchased by consumers. This is the only direct consumer site legitimate out there. All the rest of them are bait, or, bait and switch. Um, we're very proud of it. But as we keep going, I would I would encourage you to go to the annuities.direct site, go to dot direct news, and look at the podcast and webinar replays that we have up there already. You could get a full education on that right there. And we're doing two more podcasts tomorrow, recording them. With, with two of the top people in the country, national people. Um, Jim and I know everybody. You know, we've been around the block a little bit, so they're, they are more than happy to get on the horn with us and help. And no, we're not just talking about annuities. We're talking about portfolios, markets, interest rates, you know, politics. We're talking about everything in, as it pertains to what you're trying to do with your life, the lifestyle that you're trying to create, 
the contractual guarantees if you need them, and how it all fits. In fact, we're making challenges to some of the top portfolio managers right now in the country to create portfolios with SPIAs, DIAs, and QLACs in them, and they're doing it. And we're going to, be, we're going to start to introduce those later in the year as they, as they test them and put them, because now they're, they see it. People like Harold Avansky, he, the godfather of financial planning, is now saying SPIAs are a must-have. That's a change. So with that, Jimmy, I'll let you close us up, and um, next time, I guess, right? Yeah, I want to just say two things. One is the quote there at the bottom by Defolian Hill is, Don't, do not wait. The time will never be just right. Start where you stand. Work with the tools you have at your command, and better tools will be found as you go along. Don't be afraid to act on what you know today. Understand the future is unknown. It will only improve if you do the right things today based on what you know today. And then the last thing is that we are going to launch a new newsletter that will be starting in the next 30 days called Income Investor that will cover a lot of these questions that you have and a lot of what Stan just talked about by uh, using the industry resources that we have access to. So we're going to launch that. If you want to be a part of that, you can go into ask questions and uh, you can say I want to be a recipient of that newsletter when it launches. But it's I think not going to be, just, not be all annuities. It's, it's going to be everything. It's going to be annuities and everything else. So it's going to be great. I mean, income investor, because Jimmy and I have been around the block. We've managed money at very high levels with some of the top firms in the country. We've done this, but we just, we just love the contractual guarantee side of annuities, and we want to disrupt the industry, and we're doing that, and that's why we own annuities.direct, uh, and we, design, we designed it and put it all together. So really appreciate everybody being with us and spending time. This is going to be replayed, uh, what, Jim, tomorrow? Yeah, be we'll have the tomorrow, replay up. Jim.